All right, so today I want to compare the cinnamon ball python with the black pastel ball python. And some people consider them to be two completely separate genes, although there are some people that actually think they're the same thing, similar to the coral glow in the banana or the lesser in the butter, maybe two different lines of the same exact gene. And what I want to do today is I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the base genes and then compare the supers and then compare how they mix in with other genes so you can really get a good handle on one versus the other to really determine for yourself if the cinnamon is the same thing as the black pastel. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with the black pastel and compare it to the cinnamon. This is the black pastel. If you actually take a look at the snake, this is a really dark background and I would say it's kind of interesting actually looking at either the black pastel or the cinnamon over here on Morph Market. There's a lot of examples of just the black pastels. We can line them up all side by side and there's a lot of different shades of black pastel from really dark to almost like a cinnamon color. I'd say it gets a little bit confusing because there's so many shades and it's really hard to you know, actually compare them. So essentially what I did is I came over and found the darkest black pastel because a lot of people say the black pastel is darker and then I compared it to the darkest cinnamon. So take a look at this cinnamon and this is really super dark. Look at how dark the background is on the cinnamon. I'd say this is really close to the black pastel comparing them side by side. And if you actually produce the super so for example if you take two black pastels and breed them together this is what you get you get a super black pastel which is an almost completely black snake with a white belly you can actually see the white coming up and every now and then in the super black pastels you can see like these little tiny spots on the snake almost like a little paradox it seems like it's pretty common with the super black pastel and if you actually compare this with the super cinnamon take a look at this this is the super cinnamon and this is actually almost exactly the same. It even has the little spots up along the back with the white belly coming up. This almost looks exactly the same. As a matter of fact, you can actually take a cinnamon, breed it to a black pastel, and you get what is known as an eight ball. This is an eight ball. <laughs> this is it's kind of interesting because they're compatible, and the, the eight ball almost looks exactly like each of the supers, the super cinnamon or the super black pastel. And when you yeah, actually Actually, the, both genes actually have some genetic anomalies, some deformities that are kind of relevant, you know, kind of persistent in the gene. Not all the time. They say, you know, you probably have, I'd say, if, if you're talking about genetic anomalies, a lot of times you have a higher occurrence of defects occurring with the super cinnamon and the super black pastel. And a lot of times you'll actually get kinking in the spine where the spine isn't completely straight. You have like a little kind of a genetic defect where the spine's kinked or you'll actually have duck billing on the mouth of the snake where the mouth is kind of flattened out a little bit it kind of looks like a duck bill and a lot of people say if you actually take the cinnamon and breed it to the the black pastel and you get the eight ball that you actually reduce the chances of kinking and getting the duck bill which kind of leads me to believe that they're actually two different lines maybe of the same gene you know it looks like they're completely compatible and they look almost exactly the same but if you know a lot of people are reporting the lower incidence of genetic anomalies which leads me to think they're actually two different lines of the same thing kind of like the coral glow and the banana or the lesser and the butter. Some people will separate them and some people will actually put them together. So I kind of wanted to show you some of the combinations when you were actually looking at each of the genes. The first one I want to start with is the pewter. The pewter is actually the cinnamon and the pastel. And this is kind of where I found some really big differences between the two. As a matter of fact, I was looking for the darkest pewter that I could find over here. And this is pretty much the darkest. Still quite a bit of kind of this light coming in on the background. If you actually compare the pewter to this one over here, this is actually the black pewter with the black pastel you can definitely see this one is a lot darker of a background when you're actually mixing in with pastel and another thing to keep in mind is that when we're talking about black pastel it's not considered a line of pastel even though pastel is in the name it gets a little bit confusing they probably should have named it black pastel because pastel is a bright yellow snake and black pastel is completely different it gets really confusing if you're actually mixing pastel with black pastel to get the black pewter just another one of those nicknames that you have to remember 
So here's another really interesting combo. This is the Panda Pie. This is actually the Super Black Pastel and the Recessive Pie. It makes for one of the most stunning snakes that I've ever seen. I was, you know, when I first started in ball python, I was only into it for a couple years and I saw this snake and I just could not believe that any ball python could be as incredible as the Panda Pie. As a matter of fact, I saw the price on this and I actually saw it for sale and I saw it when it sold and I was totally blown away. Look at the price on this, $10,000. I could not believe this and it was only it wasn't even like a month later and it sold from 1110 to 1215 just a little bit over a month this was back in 2016 and kind of the interesting thing with the panda pines is that a lot of them are actually completely white snakes you don't always get the black and the white this is kind of a kind of an anomaly I'd say maybe 50% of the time you get a really super high white with maybe just a little black on the head or the tail or you get a completely white snake and this is probably the best example I've seen of almost a 50-50 panda pie and if you actually take out the super black pastel and you throw in the super cinnamon trying to get the super cinnamon version of the panda pie take a look at this this is as close as I could get as far as getting some color on the snake if you actually take a look at the head on this one I'd say it acts really similar to the super black pastel look at how inkjet black that is on the head and there's only a couple examples over here most of them are all white and there's only one with a little color and you can definitely tell by the color I'd say this is almost exactly if not exactly the same as the panda pine as a matter of fact, you can actually take uh, both genes, mix them together, and get the eight ball pine. So the eight ball pine actually has one copy of the cinnamon, one copy of the black pastel, and there's uh, I think there's only one or two snakes over here, and they're both completely white. I couldn't find any with color, so I really couldn't compare the eight ball panda pie to the other ones, but if, uh, my guess is if you actually produce this with color on it, you would get that inkjet black color on the eight ball panda pie. So I wanted to show you what happens when you mix in these genes with albino. So I first wanted to start with just a regular albino so you can really see the effect because you have to look at the beginning albino to see really see the differences when you're mixing in black pastel or cinnamon. And the, uh, if you actually look at just the regular albino, it's a yellow and white snake. But if you look at the amount of yellow and white, usually the yellow is a little bit more dominant. You have a little bit more yellow than white. And of course, they always have the bright red eyes. Here's what happens if you take black pastel and work it into the albino. This is one of my favorite combos. It is pretty awesome. And essentially what it is, is it brings out a lot more white, kind of reduces the amount of yellow. And a lot of times you'll actually get the yellow kind of converting to almost like an orangish yellow. And usually they're really super high contrast. One of my favorite albino combos. And if you actually mix cinnamon in instead of black pastel, take a look at what happens. It almost acts exactly the same where you're getting a lot more white white coming out of the snake and reducing the yellow they work almost exactly the same in the albino so I kind of wanted to show you a couple of examples with Mojave. Mojave is in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. You breed two Mojaves together, you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. This is actually the black pastel Mojave, and you can see that this is actually known as the black magic. So I've actually seen some black magics that are super dark, and this is kind of like almost a cinnamon color black magic. Talk about the differences, and it seems like there's different lines of each one that people really don't distinguish. And this is actually working cinnamon in with the black uh, with the, the Mojave so this is the cinnamon Mojave kind of the cinnamon version of the black magic and it's kind of interesting in this case I actually found a darker snake than that black pastel the black magic so you can see it's, it gets a little bit confusing because there's so many variations on a theme and when you start comparing them side by side it's really difficult as a matter of fact it, probably the best way is if you actually had an eight ball and you bred it to something else and in the same clutch kind of compared them of course you know depending on the lines they could be different lines I, I'm thinking you could almost find a lighter line of cinnamon and a darker line of black pastel or vice versa and kind of get a little bit confused that way another thing you can actually get confused on is say for example if you had an eight ball which is an allelic complex so you breathe that to something half the offspring come out black pastel half come out as cinnamon if you actually took that and bred it into like a multi-gene complex or say for example if you bred them in 
into an albino and you weren't sure which one it was and you actually guessed based on your best guess, you could actually sell a snake that had cinnamon instead of black pastel. And then whoever actually got that and started breeding it through their collection, then all of a sudden they think they have one thing and then they have another thing. And I think yeah, they can actually get really mixed up in the industry, people thinking they have one thing. Some people just kind of guessing or maybe not knowing at all and just, you know, selling it to someone and they start breeding it together and then they assume that it's one or the other. That could be a really big point of confusion. So here is the leopard ball python. The leopard is, I kind of consider it a pseudo dark morph because if you mix it in with other genes that are dark, it makes them super dark, almost jet black. And if you actually mix it in with genes like a coral glow, it'll actually keep the brightness and it won't really darken the snake. So it's, it's almost like the litmus test for you know kind of determining the differences between two genes. You know, if one's darker than the others, usually if you mix in leopard, you could definitely tell one way or the other. And here's what happens if you mix in leopard with black pastel you get a really super jet black dark background and kind of the leopard essentially what it does is it kind of breaks up the pattern reduces the alien heads and a lot of times with leopard you'll actually get a stripe right down the tail section of the snake and you can see this is really dark and if you actually compare this to the cinnamon leopard take a look at this this is almost exactly the same when you're mixing it in with leopard really dark background you get the stripe right down the tail and you know actually looking at these two uh, it's it's almost impossible to tell the difference between the cinnamon and the black pastel so here's another kind of an interesting combo. As a matter of fact, I left this out of my last video. I was going through all the white snakes, all the possibilities you can make, and someone said, hey, how about the super cinnamon albino, which is a really interesting combination. I've never really looked at this before. There's so many combinations. Some of them like slip through the cracks. The super cinnamon albino is an all white snake with red eyes, and a lot of times it'll have these little specks of yellow. I've noticed in a lot of examples, sometimes it'll be completely white. Sometimes they'll have little tiny yellow specks all over the snake which is kind of an interesting characteristic of the combination and here's what happens when you take the, the, the super black pastel and mix it in with the albino take a look at this it is still an all white snake with red eyes works the same way with the supers working it into albino as a matter of fact I want to show you this last one here this is actually called the cue ball because essentially what it is is an eight ball but it is white which is kind of interesting the called it the cue ball and you can definitely see in this case this is actually the super black pastel with the cinnamon worked it into albino so it's kind of acting as a super it's kind of like an eight ball on top of the albino makes for a white snake with these little speckles and you can definitely tell they're really acting the same with the albino so the question is is cinnamon the same as black pastel I'd say in most cases it is exactly the same and in some cases it there are slight differences between between the two genes. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Chrissy Harding asks, where is the food and water in your rat rack when you're actually pulling out a tub? And that is a very good question. I know it's kind of weird if I actually go into my rats, I pull out a tub and it looks like there's no food or water in there at all. And essentially what it is, is in the back of the racks, up on top, the, the food actually sits in trays and they can get to the food from underneath. And then the water is actually a little water nozzle in the front and it hooks up to a five gallon bucket on top of the rack. And let me tell you, that is a lifesaver. I used to keep rodents in in glass aquariums and I had all these contraptions in there like I had the, I was trying to figure out how to keep the food in there without actually soiling the food. I started with little dishes of food and they would soil that food so quick I was actually throwing out more soiled food than actually feeding my rodents when I first started and I finally went to these racks from feeding from above and there's like zero waste when it comes to feeding rodents in a rack system and the water is a lot easier too. I used to have every single tub I actually had a little tiny water bottle on every glass aquarium with all my rodents. It was a lot of work to actually keep up. And with the, the watering system, it's really nice. I'd say kind of the downside of the watering system is sometimes for the older water nozzles, sometimes they can drip a little bit and it seems like you really have to go through and replace your water nozzles. And sometimes you can actually repair them, but I usually just go through once a year and replace all my water nozzles just to make sure I don't have any flooded tubs. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.